Hands down, the most common way of expressing a point in three-dimensional space is using rectangular form that we studied for a long time. Even, even back in previous math classes, rectangular form was where you just had an, an ordered pair x, y. And in three-dimensional space, you would have an, what's called an ordered triplet x, comma, y, comma, z, which is basically where you find these three values on the x, the y, and the z axis, find where they meet in space, and you plot your point, and, and you're done. So every point uh, corresponds to an ordered triplet x, y, z. But sometimes it's helpful to express your point in other forms for different reasons. For example, there's two other major forms. One is called cylindrical form, which is what we'll study in this video. And then the other is spherical form, which we'll cover either in the next video or, or soon, soon thereafter. So in cylindrical form, you're still going to have an ordered triplet. So you'll still have three, three values here, but they won't be X, Y, Z necessarily. Um, instead, we're going to display this point in a different way. Um, and it primarily differs in the X, Y value sense. In the X, Y plane, before you rise up Z units, you have to find this location right here on the ground before you go up Z units. And in rectangular form, you just said X comma Y. Well, here, what we're gonna do is measure the direct distance from the origin to that location in the X, Y plane, and we're gonna call that measure R. And then that line segment there, the measure of that line segment to the positive x-axis, that angle measure, we'll call that angle theta. Now, if, you, if you're um, starting to think and you say, well, I've heard of an r theta instead of an x, y before, that's, that's polar form, right? You'd be exactly correct. This is very, very similar to like a three-dimensional version of polar form, kind of. The x and the y convert to an r, and a theta. And the cool thing about, or the nice thing about cylindrical coordinates is the z value that we used in uh, rectangular form is going to be the same thing in cylindrical form, which is really nice. So instead of x comma y comma z, we're going to have r comma theta comma z. So z and z match up. But now how do you convert from x and y to r and theta? Well, a lot of this we can cheat a little bit if you remember some uh, conversions back from, from Calculus 2. So let, let's see if we can convert from x, y, and z to r, theta, and z. If you look in the x, y plane, you'll notice there's a very natural triangle that's made here. If you take this line, you take uh, this line to the x-axis and then this line here, do you see that right triangle that's created there? Here I've just taken this and moved it out and drawn it in a two-dimensional plane so we can see it a little better. Uh, matching up apples to apples, I think this would be theta. I think this hypotenuse would be r. I think the base would be x right here. And then the vertical side would be y. So that's just like an aerial view of this three-dimensional shape right here. Um, so we can convert from x's and y's to r's and, and theta's pr pretty easily. I'm going to skip some of the details, but you'll notice that the uh, x-coordinate would be r cosine theta. The reason for that is cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, so x over r x over r, but if you multiply the r to the right-hand side to get the r's and the thetas together and keep, keep it separate from the rectangular coordinates like x and y, you would get this equation. In a similar way, y would be r sine theta because you get opposite over hypotenuse, y over r equals sine theta, so y equals r times sine theta. Um, there's a, a conversion between the x, the y, and the r, just the links of the triangle. That would be the Pythagorean theorem that you probably know, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And if a lot of these look familiar, that's a good thing. These are the same conversions we used back when we studied uh, polar form. And then lastly, we have a conversion between theta, y, and r, x that doesn't include r. And that was tangent of theta equals y over 
x. So these are the conversions you need. Notice none of these have z in them because you don't need a conversion for z because z is the same in, in both forms. So this, this conversion thing that we just studied right here, that's a big deal. The vast majority of these problems that you'll see related to cylindrical coordinates will have you convert either points from rectangular form to cylindrical or vice versa, or entire equations from rectangular form to cylindrical or vice versa. And I know we didn't do any examples here in this video of those, but we'll have a few examples coming up in some later videos. In this video, I just wanted to go through the basics of explaining what cylindrical coordinates are. So hopefully uh, cylindrical coordinates now make a little bit more sense.